I'm Cynthia, also to all of you. I'm Cynthia Schneider. I'm a professor of diplomacy at Georgetown University. I'm also affiliated with the Brookings Institution uh, in Washington, and I have a long time affiliation with ICD uh, as a member of the board back from its very, very first conference uh, with Mark at Columbia University when he was actually, I think, younger than most of you. Uh, and it's been really, really fantastic to see its growth and uh, to see all of you here. I'm here this week uh, teaching a course for the master's students in future trends in cultural diplomacy. And I have the great pleasure of spending a couple of minutes asking you a couple of questions. And then I'm going to turn it over to all of you. And then after that, and you're welcome to stay, but I'm sure you and your family are busy, but you're totally welcome to stay. Um, I will have a little talk with all of you about cultural diplomacy, but not the kind of talk you're used to getting, because there's just so much interesting stuff going on this um, week uh, that we'll talk about the whole Basim Yusuf, John Stewart, the blow up of Twitter, and the US Embassy, and all this stuff that's going on, very relevant to understanding diplomacy. But I want to congratulate you. I am so impressed with what you have done. And really, I have a couple of questions, and then I, I want to turn it over to, to everyone. Um, I was struck by, the, by one of the first things you said, that you discovered to your surprise that there was no law against buying votes and that you made sure that there was a law that you could then use to prosecute people. You know, that, it went about in a slightly different way, but in the United States, that is how we overcame segregation. Because, you know, we had in our constitution, of course, everyone's free and equal, all these kind of things, but there was no law against discrimination. And it was, in our case, the Supreme Court decisions that came down first against discriminating in schools, discriminating in the workplace, discriminating in uh, residences. And so then you could really have action, because then you could prosecute the people who were discriminating. And then the people who were being discriminated against had rights. So I'm so impressed that you have, um, that you have done this. And I, I wanted to ask you um, a couple of things. One, um, what led you to decide to do this coalition? And wasn't, I'm, I'm thinking, have you had, I, mean, I had no idea that collective elections in Brazil were corrupt. I didn't know that was a problem. And I think, by the way, once you get handle campaign finance, uh, would you please come to the United States? <laughs> We have uh, this had a very familiar ring, you know, a few people are funding the candidates and this isn't democratic. Uh, this uh, seems like a bad influence coming from the United States down because that is regrettably truer and truer uh, in the United States. Um, so I'm, I'm curious how you, how you formed this group in the first place, what led you to do it? Because I'm kind of thinking, well, have you not had international observers in the elections, and do they not really do any good? And also, you must go to Egypt before their next election. Seriously, <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm really serious about that. We, that's what we do. We convene you know, something with all the countries that really have problems with their elections. Of course, the real problem is when the country in power is the one perpetrating the corruption. And I don't know how much that is true there. So tell about the origins along the way uh, and what led you to do this, and the role, if any, of the international community, or did you just give up on the international community? Well, Okay, thank you for, for the questions. Well, we decided to, to face this problem. Uh, maybe I could mention my personal reasons to, to, to work with this issue. 
uh, when I was uh, a student in the university, I decided to give my personal support for one candidate in my state. I live in one of the I live in the poorest state of Brazil, called Maranhão. Uh, and when I was there in the street, distributing, uh, sharing and distributing flyers, some woman asked me for money in exchange of the flyer. I will receive this, this paper if you give me money. And I replied that, well, we are not sharing, distributing money, not, uh, only ideas. Of, no, I will not receive nothing of anyone without a previous payment. <laughs> and then it, uh, I, I, I was 19, and it was a, a remarkable <laughs> moment in my life. And I decided, well, I, if I, can in the future, I, I will try to, to, to make something uh, in relation of the, the this relate in relation of this problem. And but our movement uh, have the conception that the elections are the doors of uh, not only for corruption but for the good governance too. And then we have to take care of our elections. And uh, the people were always, always thinking on which party is the better political party, the best political party. But we started to think, but uh, if you don't take care of elections, uh, it's not possible to imagine what kind of people, what kind of candidates will, will prevail. And then we decided to define it, this as a focus. We are not fighting against corruption in Brazil. Because corruption is a, is a monster, <laughs> a big monster. We decided to face one specific focus and, and one special focus, the door for the political power. Huh? And this is the reason why we define it the, the, the special mission for our, our movement uh, since the beginning. Uh, and I think that we have a lot of things to, 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 to teach, but we have a lot of things to learn too. And this is the idea when I, when I think and create one international network. Why not to share experiences of, with people from Egypt, Egypt Tunisia, Morocco, Oh, Ivory Coast, every place. Uh, I was in the University of Stanford last year, invited to, to, to talk about our actions in Brazil. But not to talk, but to hear, because they invited to 25 other local leaders that, was, that were uh, trying to, to face uh, the uh, cor corruption in, in their countries. And yes, I think we should try to promote uh, discussions uh, in a horizontal way, uh, not only more in countryside, but, but with other people that are trying to do the same in other countries. And do the... Uh, oh, it's working. One more really quick question, and then I'm turning to you guys, okay? So I have your questions ready. Um, in the past, have you had international observers? I mean, people from places like the Carter Center. Does that, is that not sufficient, or have you not had them? No, uh, I didn't. We didn't uh, have. Uh, and then we, and this is one of the reasons we decided to, to mobilize everybody we can. To, uh, like that we will be uh, the observers of our own elections. Brazil uh, is growing, uh, everybody knows, in, in, in social issues, in, in the economic arena, but we have not uh, 
sufficient success on the political arena. And we, in, including uh, the, in the uh, last year, we have for the first time in the Supreme Court the condemnation of people at the high level of the government in Brazil, in one episode called Mensalão, uh, involve, involving some ministers of the past government. And then we, we have, we have uh, to, to make something to, 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 to combat the this, this situation. Well, that is really, uh, really fascinating and very inspiring. And I, I think it is a much better route, the one you're taking, of not you know, just relying on the outside observers. Because, I mean, they're, it's better than nothing. But I oh. think in most cases, if someone is determined to tamper with the election results, they do anyway, regardless of the international observers. So it's a much better approach, it seems to me, to really take it from the inside and do it um, do it yourselves. And I love what you said, that that's the door to politics. And if you start at the door, then you can then move down. But uh, it sounds like a it sounds like a very manageable thing to do. And it's really, uh, really impressive. I think other people could learn a lot uh, from your efforts. Now let me turn it over to you guys and see what kinds of questions you have thinking of, you know, perhaps uh, from some of the countries you're from, maybe this resonates, maybe it doesn't. Maybe maybe if you're like me, I'm a little surprised to hear this. Um, because we all think of Brazil as, you know, charging ahead and doing so well economically, and I am particularly interested in culture. I think of Brazil being so innovative in culture. It was the first country to really understand the kind of open platform for music on the internet and use it to your benefit and other people's benefits. So I think all these great things about Brazil, I'm really surprised to even hear this. It was a good secret, I think, or else I'm just out of it. Um, so I'm curious what, you, what your responses are. How does this fit into your framework of what you know about human rights and corruption and uh, transparency and good governance? And please uh, introduce yourselves before you uh, speak. Thanks. Okay. You're going to that one. Okay. Yeah, we're nimble here. Um, I'm Giovanni. I'm an intern here. I come from Italy. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you. Uh, I want to ask Judge uh, Reis whether, in your in your political action, what sort of did you encounter a wide political support? Because in order to pass the laws, I guess. You, you needed the, the political support. And I want to relate it to, the, to my country in Italy, where um, a law such as uh, Olympia is not, is not uh, it doesn't exist. We still, well, everybody knows uh, about the past of our ex prime minister, there's no need, and uh, about many other politicians that are very corrupted and have very um, dirty past. But there's been a lot of pushing from civil society to uh, do a law against corruption, but at the same time, because the political class uh, and the political and uh, the parliament is so corrupted, they're preventing uh, a law to, uh, to actually um, prevent a corrupted people, people with a, um, a corrupted background to get into, uh, into the parliament. So I wanted to ask you, what sort of political support did you find? Was it bipartisan? Do you have to lobby a lot in the through the political parties, or it was quite automatic that uh, as soon as you presented your uh, your proposal, the parliament uh, uh, just accepted and voted for it? Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, we had a lot of problems to to obtain approval of the those laws, especially the second one, uh, the official limpa. But this is one of the reasons why we decided to use the popular initiative, because we, we was creating uh, uh, one mobilization, the mobilization needed to press, to press, to promote the pressure on the national parliament. And we had, we used a lot, the social networks in, in internet to, to, to push this project. And this 
it it was not possible if we don't had the very the the if we if we if we don't had if we didn't have the the real support of the people this is the the difference if we've decided to present directly to the parliament these projects uh, via one mp uh, we we certainly didn't have the official impalo sound suspiciously like a real democracy actually i mean <laughs> yes. the people yes <laughs> Do it, but a, a shocking idea. Um, other questions from you guys? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, have you, but now I'm just curious while we're getting ready, have politicians now jumped on board? Is this now seen as something oh, good for yes, politicians? No. <laughs> suddenly it's their idea after, after all. After obtaining uh, the, the real support of uh, everybody, the politicians start to say, oh, Save the fish limpa, <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like uh, like uh, a brand. Fish limpa is a is a Brazilian brand. <laughs> that, that is, I have to see that written. I just keep thinking of kind of a wet fish. I know I know that's not it, but I have to look at that. Okay, <laughs> fish that's great. Thank you for your presentation. I am Teresa Palomar from Mexico, and of course, I am very aware of this problem also in my country. I really appreciate what you are doing, and I know that you have done things in my country also. But uh, my question is, uh, what do you think that is um, the key? Sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, what are the, the, the aspects to go against a government who has done that, uh, the buying of votes, for example? How to explain them that they need to um, allow oh, uh, this or to rise these laws when they got the power because mm -hmm. of that. So what do you think that is the key to, to do it? Because as you say, uh, people is the most important and we need to be aware, but also how to confront that, that government that got there because of that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was in a Mex Mexico twice last year, I invited by the, the electoral tribunal uh, of the ju judicial power, power uh, at the federation level, and it was a, a great opportun two great opportunities to to talk with Mexican people, and I really enjoyed it. And I will publish uh, one book in Mexico on the official limpa experience in Spanish, and maybe it could be, uh, be interesting for for you. Uh, and well, I don't know if I understood correctly your question but the the but uh, I think if I understood it correctly Maria what you you were saying was how, how it's particularly difficult if you have politicians who have gotten to their position through corruption so how do you pers move them away from this and how do you take on if it's the government in power is that right if it's the government in power and they've gotten there through corruption it's going to be very difficult to persuade them to let this go <laughs> well well was that correct por favor <laughs> De, o bueno, en algunos de los casos, por no generalizar, es eh, debido a la corrupción. Y debido a la corrupción o a la compra de votos están ahí. Entonces, ¿cómo confrontarlos y decirles, bueno, este, ya no tienes que ser corrupto, tienes que, eh, tienes que apoyar leyes en las que ya no se eh, compre el voto, ah. en las que, o sea, es como que, eh, ¿cómo moverlos de ahí si, si llegaron ahí por, por eso? ¿no? Y, y son parte de un partido en el que tienen, o de alguna manera, siguen repitiendo esos patrones, ¿no? Y bueno, especialmente en, mi, en, mi, en las elecciones que me surgió el año pasado, y hubo demasiadas situaciones de Oh, thank you. Uh, well, in fact, uh, we are not thinking in the current government or in this current composition of the parliament. 
we are thinking strategically in the future using uh, tools like the social mobilization to uh, organize the people, not to uh, present only judicial demands against uh, uh, these uh, one or other sp special or particular politician. And the idea is to, to, to change the mind of the people. It's so difficult, but the only way we have. We, do, we don't have another. We can't uh, see a proved one, one law, and well, as a magic, we don't have more problems with corruption. And then the idea is to, to promote mobilization, to educate the people, and then some people will be elected, some people will be not elected because of one no law we have obtained uh, against this kind of candidacy. And other people, as we have seen in Brazil, will be not elected due to the fact that some people is finally opening their eyes and deciding not to vote in this kind of, in this kind of candidates. Well, it's, a, the pro, it's not easy, but it's the only way <laughs> we have to, to do. Yo no sé si se si fui suficientemente claro en la respuesta. <laughs> Thank you. Um, other questions? I have, um, while you all are, are thinking, um, and I really want you to come up with questions. I mean, there's absolutely no point in being here. Thank you. Uh, being here and not asking questions, you know, and I'm finding my own personal revolution against the occasional ICD tendency to have you plant yourself in a seat and listen to people for 10 hours at a time. And that I don't think that has anything to do with cultural diplomacy. It is an engagement and exchange. So you guys have to help me with this. Go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Lisa Lamar. I come from Belgium. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate you with the work you've done. And uh, as you say, it's very important to not try to battle corruption as a whole, but to find specific goals and specific object objects. And I was wondering, do you see with the work you've done, like uh, the buying votes as like a solved problem and what do you think would be a next very very important object or is it like something you're going to continue working on and that's that's going to be your main focus or what would be the next step basically okay uh, we've selected the okay it's working uh, uh, we've selected this this special issue after one research we we sent a lot of uh, forms for the Brazilian people uh, using the the network of the members of the Catholic Church, and when we received uh, the forms, uh, uh, and the, the the question we presented was, uh, what's the most important problem present in our elections? And the answer was vote buying. And then we decided with the, the support of the, the armed people. And this is the... the support of the who, pe which people? The... No, the, uh, our your armed own. people, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Talking about s support, uh, we pre we've presented the, the first popular initiative with the uh, support of one million signatures. The second one, two million signatures. And then the third uh, campaign, we hope to mobilize at least five million people uh, to uh, supporting this. Well, the, the, our options are based on, on uh, direct uh, questions presented to the, the society. They decide what we, we have to do. That is really fascinating and such a brilliant strategy to use also the Catholic Church as a way to find out who everybody was and where they were. Um, I am curious about your use then to, I guess, to amplify that of, of social 
media, you know, one, and it sounds like it would complement that strategy. One of the things that uh, was sort of a, a spark, lit a spark to the beginning of the protests in the Arab world, which, you know, may not be ending at the moment exactly the way they intended, but it's evolving. And one of the things that really got it started was, in fact, uh, the one seminal, uh, a couple of seminal Facebook sites, particularly the one for Khaled Saeed, who was murdered by the police in Alexandria. And when the now famous Google executive, Wael Ghanim, put up of his memory, and it was called We Are All Khaled Saeed, 350,000 people liked it. And it was a, a, a significant factor was the fact that people saw, oh my God, 350,000 people feel the way I do. I, you know, that this is really something. So I wonder if you've had an experience like that and how the social media campaign works with your survey campaign. Oh yes, uh, we, uh, when I, I was only, thinking uh, about a possible future campaign. I was here in Germany, in Köln, Colonia, uh, to work out when research on the German electoral system, that's quite interesting. Uh, f uh, and when a researcher of the University of Köln gave me the suggestion to use Facebook in our future campaign. And we did uh, successfully with a lot of people using the social not networks, not only Facebook, but Twitter too. Use it a lot to, to send messages for the, the congressmen. And it was so important for our final victory. And, and, uh, and I personally won a lot with this because due to the use of the Facebook, I received a personal invitation of Bono to meet him. <laughs> uh, I think that'll work for all of us. I don't know where that's going. How did you do that? <laughs> and, and I think that we, we in Brazil, the people, uh, like everybody, but in every in, in whole world, but in Brazil we have uh, used the social networks with great su success to to promote uh, civic mobilization. Oh, it's really really impressive. We have I think we'd take one more question because I know we promised you'd we'd end by just about now. Surgeon, it's really impressive and and. Uh, Obviously, you're really led by the people. It's really great. Um, I welcome you with all my respect here at the ICD Hub. It is working. Huh? Yeah. It is working. Yeah. So, okay. Um, I am one of the master students. My name is Sergio. And uh, Professor Schneider, Schneider mentioned that the, these actions, the likes on Facebook, it is. I actually, I just wanted to comment on it. Um, if, if I may, and I can ask a question if it is so necessary. And the question, uh, actually, the the thing that I want to explain you, I was once in the university, and we decided to like meet and protest something like the cafeteria prices. They may, may increase it. Me and one of my friends, we decided to run an organization via Facebook. We did this like 350 pe people said we are going to come there and do the things and. Okay, we were like, yeah, we are going to do it. We went there, like me, him, and nerd of the class was there, just three people. And it was a very big disappointment then. I started to think like, okay, people say that they are coming, but <laughs> where, why they are not coming? And I said, okay, next time we will do something like this. I said, um, we are going to do this event, and next time we are going to uh, show you a movie. But then they said, yeah, free movies. And then people started to come. Come, I mean. And <laughs> my question is, OK, you, you, um, you take science, but is that means the actual action? Or it's just like, oh, I find this cool. OK, I'm going to sign it. So, but what is, what, is, what is going to be, I, I mean, is that possible to share ideas by this way, which otherwise could be used? That was my question. Thank you for your answer. 
Okay. Well, uh, we 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 really need to understand the limits of the internet. Uh, the the use of the internet is totally different of the traditional ways of mobilization. And sometimes we expect that the internet could substitute the, the civic engagement and the way we use it to see in the past. It's a totally different thing. And we have to understand this totally different environment. Uh, well, we are tr uh, collecting signatures uh, in paper, not in the internet, because of one lack in our one problem in our law that that doesn't uh, allows the uh, collection of uh, electronic signatures. But uh, collect by collecting the signatures in paper, we are present, really present in the street, in the churches, in the schools talking with people and not only collecting the, the signatures, but presenting speech and lectures and uh, inviting the people to, the, to debate the, the question, what, which is more than only collect si signatures. But about internet, uh, I, I am one witness of with what, what happened in Brazil with the Ficha Limpa law. Uh, the people really used the internet to send email messages for the MPs. I, one uh, parliamentary, one, one MP is, uh, asked me, please Marlon, tell to the people to not send me more emails because uh, tell, tell them that I am one of your supporters. I will vote for Fischer Limpa. I, I don't want more, I can't receive more emails. And uh, I replied, oh, it's not possible to do it. I don't know who is sending emails. It's an idea that is, that is uh, for every part I can't, I can't, I cannot control. Then we have to use the internet thinking in what the internet can really do. Uh, and I think that we have a lot of things to learn with the use of these tools for the mobilization. But we have to, we in our movement have the idea that we have the, we, we have clear that we have to combine the, the both. The, the mobilization in the electronic tools, with the use of electronic tools, but we have to be present in the real life of the people, talking in, in the very space they are occupying uh, in, day, in, 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 in every day. Mm. Yeah, so it takes its own special strategy. Why don't we take one more question? Go ahead. Um, and you have to know how to do it well, which you've obviously figured out. Fascinating that the politician who asked you this question didn't understand that this was fundamentally coming from the people. <laughs> that he seemed to think that you'd rigged the whole thing, which is really fascinating. Yes, I totally, I totally agree. <laughs> I am from Tanzania. Yeah. Um, I would like uh, to ask you, how do you screen um, these politicians, as you have said, you have said that you are screening them at the door before they, in, they enter into this political system. How are you going to screen them? And also, I would like to know when maybe you have screened them and somebody's already in the um, campaign, political campaign, um, and you and uh, have done corrupt, corruptions, whatever, how do you prove that there is a corruption? And when you, and uh, maybe when you have proved, how do you um, uh, um, act on them? Are you disqualifying them from co from election, or um, um, is there any any type of uh, actions you are taking there, please? Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you for asking. I had that question too. I mean, does it then result sometimes in prosecution? Is there a legal follow up, or are they just not allowed to run? Oh, I started in this movement just uh, presenting lectures for the the other judges and the, the, in the first moment i started to work with the 
MCC, I was uh, uh, promoting the education of judges, other judges like me, to apply this law. And this uh, great problem, the problem of the evidence of the proofs, uh, when we, you are trying about uh, something so special as a, a public mandate, the, uh, you, uh, you cannot think that that could be easy to uh, cancel when public mandate. You have to be, you have to have a, a strong and uh, uh, evidence, strong evidences to to this, but. Uh, we have changed one, one inter interesting aspect of our uh, jurisprudence that was related to the extent of the effects of the extension of the effects of the vo vote action of vote buying. Uh, in the past, uh, the, the tr the, we, we use it to say in our tri tribunals that is needed to prove that the uh, illegal act had a um, potential to uh, change the outcomes of the elections. But now, since the approval of the, the, the law against vote buying, we have to prove only the, the action against one only voter. It's only we need to prove that one only voter was uh, have received one offer uh, uh, for someone trying to vote uh, uh, his vote, and th this is one important uh, aspect of our uh, jurisprudence. And I was trying just to talk about this with the tribu electoral tribunal in Mexico. Because the law in Mexico, the uh, the fines that is need that uh, the tribunal need to to receive proofs that the result of the el election was changed for the illegal act, and it is impossible to prove this. It's totally impossible because it's not uh, no one have <laughs> one ball of crystal to 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 see this yeah? and then this we have to to think and this is the idea why i was talking with mark about the how we need to be together to share experiences to learn together one with the experience of another to 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 keep walking and to 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 think on on what we can to do with the experience of the other peoples and movements well thank you so much i volunteered to work with you on this from my cd i think it is really fantastic and more people should know about that and that comparison is really useful i mean really you do kind of need to get down in the details and even so even if there's so Mexico could say well we have a law against this but then when you find out what it is you find it's a law that is actually not going to ever work so yes. I can see how the there's a lot of work to be done uh, and thank so thank you so much for coming here and sharing your time thank you it's really <laughs> really inspiring thank you thank you thank you very much thank you Mark thank you to ICD for this opportunity, and I hope we can work together in some, in some issues. Thank you.